So let's chat a little bit about image maps and how we're going to be using them here in this course. So we're going to be creating image maps for rectangular objects today. Um, your text discusses how to do these from scratch, uh, determining the coordinates, and then inserting them utilizing a proper syntax. But there are some tools out there that can do this for us, and I'm going to make uh, creating image maps so much easier for you by showing you some tools because uh, I'm a big fan of lazy as you've heard me say in this class a couple times but before we get into that tool we need to understand three things that your chapter discusses you know it discusses what an image map is it discusses the disadvantages of using image maps and then also server versus client side image maps so what is an image map um, the coordinates are based on an X and Y axis so in our case, um, a rectangle would be the top left corner of the image is the x and y coordinate, or 0, 0, um, representing the reference point, and all other coordinates are in reference to that reference point. Your text discusses the syntax for, correcting, for creating rectangles, circles, and polygons. For a circle, you would need to know the location of the radius and the x-axis for the right edge of the circle. For a polygon, you need to know all of the coordinates for all of the edges. But for our case today, I'm going to be demonstrating how to create uh, a rectangular image map. So like I said, to define the rectangular shape, we need to know the top left corner and the bottom right corner. The syntax for the attribute will essentially be um, coordinates or abbreviated chords equals quotations x, y, x y close quotations those spaces you know wouldn't necessarily be in there although it, you could you could write it like that and it's not going to do any harm because you know this the space isn't you know doesn't do anything when it's rendered um, but just for our purposes today i just wanted to show it to you in this way uh, chords equals parentheses uh, i'm sorry chords equals quotations x y x y close quotations the syntax is very particular with this as most HTML is. So the coordinates attribute is within the larger area element. Elements are composed of various attributes and in this case we have this area attribute, I'm sorry, this area element is composed of the shape attribute, the chords attribute, the HTML reference attribute, and the alternate text for that HTML reference. So our shape attribute is rectangle or abbreviated rect and our chords or coordinates attribute is now with the actual coordinates itself. So 4, 3, 13, 20 represent the XY, XY coordinates of the rectangle. And then the HTML reference represents the link that when users hover over those coordinates, that rectangular image map area, and click on it, it would take them to link. Uh, a page called link htm and then the alternate text for that that would hover when the user hovers over that would just be link and don't forget we can always have elements within elements uh, for example an entire web page is within the body element and in this case our area element the area shape uh, I'm sorry just the area element for our image map is within the map element and we have to give our map a name so in this demonstration I have a collage that we're about to look at where different photos within the collage represent different links to different websites. And then we also have to give uh, the image map an ID. We talk, talked a little, you learned a little bit about IDs when you've been look, looking into CSS, but for our purposes right now, we could just give it the ID of map. And that's all within the map element. So now that we know what an image map is, we can discuss the disadvantages of using image maps. Uh, your text talks at length about the disadvantages of using image maps. And like, for example, what if, the, what if a user cannot load the images or what if a user is blocking images? Don't forget, a user can choose. Um, also think about responsive web design. The user, can, in terms of the user can choose their user agent, whether they're viewing this on their iPad or their iPhone or their Android phone. Are all these images going to be able to come through? Will the user be able to click on these different hotspots that you have set up? Uh, this is why it's very important to always include perhaps a text version of the image map somewhere on the page so that the website can still function. For example, if your whole navigational menu, which I've seen many students do 
navigational menus that are essentially image maps, what if the users can't access those images? Then the user wouldn't be able to go to the various other places of the website. So essentially you'd get this really nice home page that's blocking the image map for the top or bottom or, or vertical, horiz vertical horizontal navigation or whatever, and then they can't go anywhere. So they're just stuck there on that home page. So that's why it's it's proper practice to make sure you try to, I mean, it really depends on the design of the website and the needs of the users, but to try to include uh, a text version of the image map somewhere. So if your top navigational menu is an image map, then below in the bottom in the footer, we should have a text version of those links. And then your text also discusses the differences between server and client side image maps. Uh, we've talked a little bit about how we're not really able to do a lot of server scripting in this class, uh, CGI, um, because it's outside the scope of this course, but also Webster Lab Webs isn't set up to do that. So for our purposes in this course, we will be creating client-side image maps where the client's browser essentially does all the work. So now let's take a look at our image mapping tool. So what we have here is the fun website, uh, image maps. Dot com so image-maps.com and what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be uploading an image into imagemaps.com and then we're going to be allowing this uh, web program uh, or in this case it says a basic online HTML image mapping tool um, to create hotspots on that image so go ahead and go to imagemaps.com and what we're going to be doing is and, and again this is free there is some advertisements that you're going to see, and it's also going to put some extra junk in the code, and we're going to talk about how to remove that, uh, which is something that you often find. And I wouldn't, I'd be careful on clicking on other things like advertisements over here uh, uh, and other links, but I've gone through and tested this, and we, sh and we should be fine. So, so what the first thing you need to do is to choose your file. And what I have here on my desktop is I have my how fo HIO fo folder. And within my root folder, I have an images directory, and then we're going to be making an image map of this uh, collage here of Studio Ghibli films. So I'm clicking on the image, and I'm going to click open. And then what I need to do is then you're going to click start mapping your image. Then you're going to get this advertisement up here at the top. Go ahead and allow it to take its seconds to go through. Um, there's really nothing that you can you can do. Then you're going to click continue to next step. So now what we have is we have this image. I'm going to zoom out so I can see everything. Um, but, but what you're going to see is the image. And then now what we can do is we can start creating rectangular hotspots on this image. So what I want to do is I have already pre-planned and I know exactly which parts of the collage that I would like to link to. I'd like to link uh, my users to Lapita, Castles in the Sky. I'd like to link them to my neighbor Totoro, and I'd also like to link them to the Grave of Fireflies video, that movie that Miyazaki was a part of. And I have, I'm going to get all of these links from Wikipedia. So what I'm going to do is whenever I'm ready to do those links, I'm going to use these first three, Lapita, Grave of Fly Fireflies, and my neighbor Totoro. So let's go ahead and start mapping them. We could just create a rectangular hotspot. I think the rectangular hotspot is the most easiest one to use. For example, I can stick it over here above uh, Castles in the Sky, drag it to Castles in the Sky, the, as much of Castles in the Sky that I can cover. And then my link for this image would be this link here. Copy that paste that in right here. I can give an alternate text for this image, which I could just write castles. The sky. And hit save. And then you'll notice down here you kind of get some feedback, you get some confirmation that that hotspot is ready. But you'll notice that I'm not, what if a user hovers over this area of the image, their, their cursor doesn't turn into a mouse. I mean, their cursor doesn't turn into the hand to let them know that this image is clickable. So what we can do is we can create a custom shape, but it's a little bit clunkier. But let's go ahead and give it a try. So I'm going to click custom shape. And then now what I can do is I can just click points on the photo 
on the collage that I'd like to make into a hotspot. So let's do the Grave of Firefly. So I'm going to click here, 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 and here. And then instead of having that nice functionality of having that pop-up window where we inputted our link and the title of the image, it, that's now over here. So let's go ahead and go to Grave of Firefly's link. Copy the link. Paste it here. And I'm just going to write Grave of Fireflies. Now keep in mind, uh, and then hit save. So now we have our Castles in the Sky link. And we also have a Grave of Confirmation that our Grave of Fireflies link is done. Now also what I want to say is keep in mind that this uh, imagemathbrush.com is very clunky. If you end up getting some sort of an error, best thing to do, honestly, is just back up completely out of it. Just back up out of it and start over fresh. So now I would like to do one more. I'd like to do my neighbor Totoro. And I'm actually going to uh, try to collect, select all of these areas here. And let's just see how that, that, that works. So I'm going to click Custom Shape. And I'm going to click, click, click. Click, and click. Now you don't. Have you noticed that I've always been choosing the the top left first? Um, you don't necessarily have to do that. That's just by habit, you know, because that's the reference point coordinate. You could have started anywhere, and the program knows that this is the 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 most uh, top left coordinate of the image map in reference to the larger image, which this over here would be zero zero and this over here would be what have you and then I'm gonna go ahead and click save and now what we need to do is we need to oh wait did you notice that I didn't title it so let's see if I can go back Oh wait, I almost forgot. I need to get my link for My Neighbor Totoro, so I'm going to go to Wikipedia again, and I'm going to go to My Neighbor Totoro, copy, paste the link in, and I'm going to write My Totoro, and hit save. So now what we can do is we need to get our code. So we hit this Get Your Code button. And now we have this tabbed uh, module with a couple different things. Um, what we need to do is we need to come up here just and click on the HTML code tab. And this essentially is our code. Do we need all of this? The answer is no. All that we need, because there's extra junk in here that we do not need, all that we need is everything between the map ID, uh, everything between the, well basically you just need the whole map element, let's say it that way. So let's select the whole map element, and we're going to copy it. Now I'm going to put this into my About page that I have been working on within my HIO site. So here on my desktop, I have my HIO root folder. I'm going to go into my root folder, and what I have here is I have the Ghibli uh, image here that I'm going to put on my About page. So let's go ahead and take a look at the About page and see what it currently looks like in Firefox and this is what it looks like in Firefox. Um, what we're going to do is we're just going to have the users come here and that image is just going to be here. Um, again, this is if I was actually setting up this Miyazaki site, it'd probably be a little bit different, but just for the purpose of us learning image map, this is how I decided to show it to you. So let's go ahead and open this in Notepad++. So edit Notepad++. Give myself a little bit more real estate to work within here. And so we need to remove this information here. So I'm just going to put in my link for my image. So I'm just going to go ahead and just write image imgsrc equals, then you got to tell the root, I mean the directory, images, and the name of the image is all Ghibli, underscore Ghibli, G I B L I dot JPEG. Don't forget your quotations. I 
width. I already know my width equals 960 because that is the width of my container. The height is 762. Border is set to 0. These are all attributes of my image. And then soon we're going to be placing in one more attribute. Well, we'll get to that in just a second. So I'm just going to close this. And I'm going to hit save. Now let's take a look, refresh our page, and see how it looks. So now we have this user would come here and it would say about. And then here is the image. Now notice these aren't clickable yet because I have not put in the code for the image map. So now let's go ahead and add in our code for our image map. And we just can put it in right here below the, um, the image element. It doesn't, honestly, it doesn't really matter where you were to place it because of something that we're, because the attribute that we're going to add to the image element here in a minute. But just for our purposes, I think it helps just to go ahead and put it all in one spot. So you're looking at this um, thing that you just posted and you're like, whoa, that's a lot of junk. Um, let's kind of cipher through it. So up here at the top, you know, your image ID, the ID doesn't need to be this uh, thing that imagemaps.com has put here. So we can just call this map. And then for the name, we can just call it collage. And then we have our different area shapes. Remember, we linked to three different movies. So our first area shape is to Castle in the Sky. So that's correct. Alternate text is Castle in the Sky. That's fine. The title is Castle in the Sky. Uh, here's some extra space that I can remove. Our next area shape, and that was a rectangle, and our next area shape was a polygon, so we have more, more coordinates here. And we have our Grave of Fireflies link, that looks fine. Alternate text, and the title, Grave of Fireflies, so I can remove this extra space. And then for our third, we have My Neighbor Totoro. Alternate, this is all of our coordinates for it. Alternate text is My Neighbor Totoro. Title, my neighbor Totoro, I can remove this extra space. And you're wondering, what is this extra shape down here? That's because imagemaps.com puts in this extra shape that would be linked to imagemap.com. We don't want that, so we're going to go ahead and take that out. And I'm also going to try to format this to give it a little, make it a little, look a little bit nicer. So now we have our image and our map, and now we have everything kind of formatted here underneath this. So let's save it and take a look at it in the browser. So I'm going to hit save. Here's my browser. Refresh the page. But you're wondering, this is not clickable. What has happened? That's because we haven't added that attribute back into the, the image element. So let's go ahead and do that. So now up here in the image element, we need to give that, that one last attribute, and we're going to write use map equals and then we need to use it give it the ID that we gave it over here so here we just called it map but we need to make sure that we put the pound sign to make sure it knows that it's the ID so we'll open up quotations pound size map so if you were to have multiple maps on your page you would need to make sure that you have different IDs for them that's the reason that we're giving it an ID and then hit save now let's go back to our browser and refresh. And now you notice that my cursor changes to a hand, and these are clickable. So a user can click and go to my neighbor Totoro. A user can click and go to Grave of Fireflies. And a user can click and go to Lapida. Now one of the biggest pet peeves of mine is would you ever want a user to be within your site and then be taken out of your site? What if they then come into Wikipedia and they go to a couple other places and then, oh, I want to go back into the site and do something. How do we do that? So that's why you, the user would essentially have to use all of these back buttons to get back to your site. But sometimes it gets a little bit more confusing on how to get back. So that's why we always want to make sure that links that go outside of our website should open up in a new tab or perhaps a new window. So to do that, we need to add one last attribute to our three different 
uh, image links. So I'm going to go back to my code and what we need to do is we need to add in the target attribute equals quotation underscore blank. So now I'm going to do that for all of these. And I'm going to hit save, go to my browser, refresh, and now user goes to Tortoro, it opens up in a new tab. So enjoy having fun with imagemaps.com, perhaps creating an image map for your term project. It's not required that you have an image map on your term project, but I could see that many of you might want to use something like that with that type of functionality on your site. Just don't forget the things that we discussed in the beginning of this video to make sure that you provide uh, text links perhaps somewhere on in, in the design of your page just in case a user is blocking um, images, especially if you're using an image map for your top navigation. And then uh, make sure you follow along with what the book says in terms of how to making sure that you're using client side scripting that's uh, scripting within the client's browser, um, which is how I showed you, which is how we demonstrate how to do this. So let the class or I know if you have questions and enjoy using imagemaps.com rather than using uh, the way the book shows you how to do it with uh, Microsoft Paint, <laughs> which is a really tedious process. So have a good day.